Dear students, after the cortex, uh, we should return to the diencephalon uh, to describe the hypothalamus because this is the highest uh, vegetative center. And before we describe the endocrine organs, I like to uh, show the uh, functions and the parts of the hypothalamus first. Uh, the hypothalamus labeled with violet is located in the lower part of the third ventricle, uh, forming the lateral inferior wall of the third ventricle. Everybody knows this. Uh, in a brain preparation, you see the borders of the hypothalamus, anteriorly uh, the lamina terminalis, inferiorly this area can be regarded as the floor, uh, which includes the optic chiasm, then behind we have the infundibular recess with the pituitary stalk, then posterior we have the mammary body, uh, these are on the floor, and the posterior border is made by the tegmentum of the mesencephalon, and superiorly we find the hypothalamic sulcus, uh, which is the borderline between the thalamus above and the hypothalamus below. The medial wall obviously is empty because the third ventricle itself would be here, and the lateral is made by the internal capsule. From an inferior aspect, you see the uh, extension of the hypothalamus between the optic chiasm and the mandatory bodies. Uh, you see between them the uh, neural stalk uh, and uh, the uh, pars uh, tuberalis together the pituitary stalk, uh, surrounded by a little grayish area. This is tuber cinerum, which, we called, uh, which will be called as the median eminence later for the, uh, in the hormone regulations. Uh, in MR picture, the uh, pinkish area shows the hypothalamus. Uh, here you see still the optic chiasm and its continuation forward the optic nerve. And posterior, this little uh, bar is the uh, mammary body. Now, in this list, you can find uh, the major functions of the hypothalamus. You see it's quite complicated, but this is the main visceral control of the body, so it plays a role in the homeostasis. What kind of uh, functions related to this? The autonomic control center, it means regulates the involuntary nervous system activities, so such as the influences of the uh, blood pressure, the heart rate, the uh, GI motility, the respiration rate and depth, and the pupil size and it plays a role in the emotional response and behavior. It has uh, several connections with the association cortical areas. It plays a role in the body temperature regulation. I will mention two centers which will be related to this. And it's important in the regulation of food intake and the water intake. And it has a very interesting uh, center as the uh, endogenous pacemaker center of the mammalian brain and this is related to the sleep-wake cycle. And finally, and maybe the most important, and this is related to our research area, the controlling the endocrine regulation, and uh, uh, the hypothalamus produces several factors, uh, such as uh, the oxytocin and vasopressin from the so-called magnocellular part, and the releasing and inhibiting hormones from the uh, parvocellular part, uh, regulating the pituitary hormones. Here you see again the major functions. Uh, the bluish shows those which are regulated by pathways, and the pink uh, shows the endocrine control, so with hormones. Uh, pathways, uh, it, is, it has connection with the autonomic centers in the brainstem and the spinal cord, and also upward uh, to the cortex and the limbic system. And this regulation includes the body temperature and fluid the emotional behavior, the circadian rhythm, and the blood pressure and heart rate, and at the end, the food and water intake. The endocrine control includes those what I mentioned earlier. Uh, the uh, larger uh, rectangle shows the releasing and inhibiting hormones via uh, the hypothalamus uh, regulates the uh, trope hormones in the pituitary gland, and uh, the smaller shows the uh, secretion of the uh, magnocellular uh, part of the hypothalamus, uh, the vasopressin and oxytocin production, and uh, here uh, we have the major function of this. Uh, the descending part of the column to the mammalian body called column separates the hypothalamic nuclei in two uh, zones, the lateral, labeled with yellow, and the rest with the medial part. 
If you look at that from a superior aspect, you see that the uh, calendar, the fornix, and also the contention from the mammillary body up to the uh, anterior thalamic nuclei, the mammillothalamic tract, uh, separate the hypothalamic nuclei into two zones, the lateral zone and the medial zone. Uh, here you see a more precise division lateral zone and the medial zone and within the medial zone we have a very tiny here with dark green labeled area the periventricular zone and the rest would be the intermediate zone later on I will just mention them as medial zone together here you see some uh, uh, nuclei those which are uh, bolded the uh, paraventricular nucleus we will mention it very soon quite often the dorsal medial nucleus, the ventral medial nucleus, the arcuate nucleus or infundibular nucleus, the lateral hypotonic area, and uh, we have the dorsal hypotonic uh, area or nucleus. You see with F the uh, column of the fornix. Now this is very important how you can divide, uh, how can you divide the medial zone into four parts. Uh, the first is the preoptic area, which includes two nuclei labeled with violet the medial and lateral preoptic nuclei. The anterior or supraoptic area or nucleus group is in green, including the paraventricular nucleus, the supraoptic nucleus, these are magnocellular neurosecretory nuclei of the hypothalamus. They uh, contain large nerve cells with long axons. Then we have the anterior hypothalamic area and at the end the suprachiasmatic nucleus. So these are the nuclei of the anterior or supraoptic uh, division. The next in blue would be the tuberal or middle, middle group, including the dorsal medial, the ventral medial, and the arcade or infundibular nucleus. And at the end the posterior or mammillary uh, part includes two nuclei only, the dorsal hypothalamic nucleus and the mammillary body. On the next uh, figure, I added a few functions to these nuclei. The medial uh, preoptic nucleus uh, contains GnRH nerve cells or LHRH nerve cells. That is a key hormone of the reproductive cycle, if you remember from the previous semester. Uh, the anterior hypothalamic nucleus shows thermoregulation center, uh, and the uh, magnocellular uh, nuclei are seen here above and below. Uh, the paraventricular and the supraoptic. The paraventricular uh, produces mostly oxytocin and the supraoptic mostly uh, ADH. And the upper, so the paraventricular has a parvocellular part as well for these factors. Two of them are releasing factors, uh, the last one is an inhibiting factor. Uh, the blue uh, area uh, includes uh, three uh, nuclei, the dorsal medial, which uh, plays a role in behavioral emotions. Uh, the second one, the ventral medial is the satiety center. The third one, the arcade nucleus or infundibular nucleus, uh, shows uh, GHRH nerve cells, so growth hormone raising hormone nerve cells, and also dopaminergic cells, and it plays role in the feeding. And finally, the red, so the posterior group, includes the dorsal hypothalamic nucleus, which uh, plays role also in the thermoregulation and the memory body, which is part of the limbic system, so this way it plays a role in the memory. This list is important because it uh, uh, shows all the nuclei in the hypothalamus. The periventricular nucleus uh, uh, shows somatostatin-containing nerve cells, so this way it belongs to the parvocellular neurosecretory system. The medial preoptic nucleus uh, contains GnRH or LHRH nerve cells, so that's why it plays a role in the reproductive functions. Here you see the corresponding lesions. If it happens before the puberty, it arrests the sexual development. If it's after the puberty, it may lead to impotence or amenorrhea. The lateral preoptic nucleus is quite uncertain. Maybe it plays all in the locomotor regulation. The anterior hypothalamic area uh, is important for the thermoregulation. It is able to detect the increase of the body temperature, and this way it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system to cool down. If we have lesion, it leads to hyperthermia. The paraventricular and the supraoptic nuclei, as I mentioned previously, are the magnocellular nuclei of the uh, hypothalamus, producing these hormones here at the level. Plus, the upper has some uh, parvocellular components as well for these factors. If we have lesion in this, 
at least today with this insipidus uh, in the lack of the ADH effect, or poly polydipsia and polyuria. The suprachiasmic nucleus uh, receives input from the retina. This is the internal clock of the whole mammalian brain and it should be synchronized to the uh, environmental lighting conditions. That's why it should be connected to the uh, photoreceptors. And it plays a role in the circadian rhythms in the sleep wake uh, cycle. The dorsal medial nucleus is for the emotional behavior. If we stimulate this nucleus, it uh, evokes rage and aggression. The ventral medial nucleus is the satiety center. If we have lesion here, we are not able to stop feeding, and that's why it leads to hyperphagia and, or obesity. And or obesity, the RK nucleus contains GR, GH origin nerve cells, dopaminergic nerve cells. First regulates the growth of the body, the second is the negative uh, factor of the prolactin secretion. That's why these two are the uh, uh, symptoms and the uh, malformations if we have lesion in these nuclei and it plays also on the feeding. So dwarfism because of the GHRH, galactoria because of the dopamine uh, neuron degeneration. Dorsal hypotonic area plays a role in thermoregulation, it's able to detect the decrease of the body temperature. So it, if it happens, then it increases the sympathetic uh, nervous system stimulation to uh, heat, to warm up the body. If we have lesion, it leads to uh, hypothermia. The mammillary body is part of the limbic system, especially the papus circuit, which is uh, in the short uh, term memory. If we have a lesion in the mammal body, it leads to very serious memory, uh, memory disturbance. And the lateral hypotonic zone is responsible for the food and water intake. So if we have lesion in this, then it leads to aphagia and or anorexia. These are special factors which play role in the food intake. The, this group called orexigen, orexigenic factors they stimulate the food intake, NPY, and the uh, agglutinated peptide. The other group uh, decreases the uh, food intake, so these are the anorexogenic uh, uh, factors. The PMC, for, uh, the proopium melanocortin, for example, through the alpha MSH. Uh, what uh, influences these hormone productions? The insulin release from the uh, pancreas and leptin from the adipocytes in case of the uh, feeding. Normally, if we have uh, enough uh, food intake, then uh, from the adipocytes leptin is released and activates this to stop the other uh, food intake uh, and inhibit this system, but they have correlation between them also. If we have some disorders, then uh, it can lead to bulimia or uh, anorexia if we have a false you know, cell body image and it belongs to psychiatry, uh, so you may hear about this uh, quite soon. Now, what I want to tell now would be the afferent pathways of the uh, hypothalamus, the first group, all of them related to the limbic system. The first one is the most famous, everybody heard, the fornix, which comes from the hippocampus, and then terminates in a specific nucleus of the hypothalamus called mammillary body. Sea terminates green is also uh, relatively well known, uh, I hope at least, coming from the amygdala and uh, terminating in the hypothalamus or septal nuclei, but not so specific nuclei of the hypothalamus. And the blue shows a, a bundle of uh, several afferents, medial forebrain bundle, from the olfactory receptors, from the septal nuclei, and also from the prefrontal cortex, uh, uh, turning to the hypothalamus, for example, the olfactory stimulus can influence the vegetative reactions directly through this uh, pathway. We have a special one uh, from the retina. I told you the uh, endogenous clock, the suprachiasmic nucleus, should receive input from the uh, environmental lighting conditions, and this is provided by the retinal hypothalamic tract. Here the animal uh, is kept in a free-running system, uh, it means in constant light. You see the daily activity in locomotor system of the animal. You see it's shifted because it doesn't uh, see the environmental lighting condition, but it's relatively organized and synchronized somehow with some shift. But if we have a bilateral lesion of the supracasmic nucleus, the locomotor activity is completely disturbed and, uh, and the 
synchronization is gone. Next is the uh, uh, afferent pathway group from the uh, cortex to the thalamus can be uh, through the thalamus, for example, from the single gyrus, or directly from the thalamus. Uh, these are called corticothalamohypothalamic or just thalamohypothalamic tract, in including the dorsal medial nucleus of the thalamus and the anterior midline uh, thalamic nuclei. And uh, these are also not surprising if you think it over that uh, the hypothalamus is the highest vegetative center. It should receive input from the uh, vegetative centers, from visceral sensory nuclei, such as the solitary tract nucleus in the brainstem, and also the monoenergic uh, uh, systems. So serotonergic comes from the rafe nucleus, the noradrenergic uh, comes from the locus cerulaeus, we studied some uh, in the uh, gross anatomy brainstem, these are labeled here. We have dopaminergic also from the ventral tegmental area. And what I want to highlight, not only visceral sensory input goes to the uh, hypothalamus, but we have also somatic afferents. So if we have, for example, a, a sharp pain, it may evoke vegetative reactions such as vomiting. So the spinothalamic tract which sense gives collateral to the hypothalamus, and this is called spinohypothalamic tract. This is a summary about the afferent pathways. This shows the efferent pathways of the hypothalamus. First, again, uh, related to the limbic system. From the mammal mammillary body, we have an efferent pathway to the enterothalamic nuclei, called mammillothalamic tract or Vigdazir tract. But we have also a returning uh, efferent pathway to the uh, reticular formation of the brainstem via the mammillotegmental tract. Uh, then we have uh, different uh, uh, connections to the visceromotor nuclei of the brainstem. We studied that these cranial nerves have visceromotor nuclei, all belong to the parasympathetic nervous system because this is the only one which has uh, uh, outflow from the brainstem. So oculomotor nerve, facial nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, vagus, so adding the westphal nucleus, the superior and inferior salivatory nucleus, and dorsal vagal nucleus, the meaning of this. And they receive a control from above, and this is called hypothalamic bulbar tract. And we have the corresponding visceromotor centers in the sympathetic outflow between T1 and L2 or C8, L3, and between S2 and S4 also for parasympathetic. And this uh, regulation from the hypothalamus is provided by the hypothalamus spinal tract or through the reticular formation. But this one, the dorsal fasciculus, is quite similar to this. It is a sense input to the spinal cord, not directly usually to the reticular formation. And uh, the last two different pathways are very special, but this is uh, the uh, most uh, uh, discovered in our uh, department. Uh, so it belongs to our research field, the hypothalamohypophysial tract and the tuberoinfundibular tract. So the connections between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland means. We have two big systems, the magnocellular neurosectatory system and the parvocellular, related to the uh, size of the nerve cells. In case of the magnocellular, we have uh, large nerve cells in the paraventricular nucleus and in the supraoptic nucleus, and the large nerve cells have long axons directly down to the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, where they terminate on the capillary loop of the inferior hypophysial artery. Uh, these uh, uh, axons are called together hypothalamohypophysal tract or supraopticohypophysal, but the hypothalamohypophysal is better because it uh, includes both. And this is how the vasopressin and oxytocin are transported from the site of the synthesis in the cell body down to the storage area uh, on the uh, inferior hypophysal artery capillary loop. And uh, we have another system labeled with black the tuberoinfundibular uh, tract, which comes from the parvocellular nuclei of the hypothalamus, including the suprachiasmatic, the antiothalamic or the arcate nucleus or tuberal nucleus, some people at the ventral medial nucleus as well. So these contain small side nerve cells with shorter axons. So they are not able to descend directly to the target side, I mean in the pituitary. They terminate at much higher level around the median eminence 
on the capture loop of the superior hypophyseal artery. So here the releasing and inhibiting hormones are released into the circulation and we need an extra carrier down to the pituitary which is provided by the vessel called portal system. Uh, the uh, two systems are summarized in this photo. Again, this is the magnus cellar, so large nerve cells with long axons. This is called hypothalamohypophyseal tract, originating from the paraventricular and supraoptic nucleus, terminating on the inferior hypophyseal artery. In contrast to the pyrocellular system with small uh, nerve cell bodies and short axons, called tuberal infundibular tract, terminating in the median eminence on the superior hypothyroid artery capillary loop. So this is what we need, an extra a portal vessel which carries the releasing and inhibiting hormones down to the anterior pituitary. It uh, summarizes the different pathways of the uh, hypothalamus. And finally, uh, this highlights the, most of the connections which are uh, reciprocal connection. It means bidirectional. Uh, all of them, almost, with the exception of this, uh, from the retina, the hypothalamus receives only input, and this, uh, the pituitary gland, where the hypothalamus sends output via these two big uh, tracts, what I just mentioned. Finally, I like to tell something about the neural secretion. This is a special phenomenon of the nerve cells, which uh, were discovered only much later than the nerve cells themselves and uh, it is uh, uh, related to this couple, Ernst and Bertha Scharrer, in uh, 1928. So, uh, in addition to the general features of the nerve cells, nerve cells, that they are able to depolarize and conduct the electric signal, there are some nerve cells which are able to uh, synthesize and release hormone-like uh, factors into the circulation, and this is called neurosecretion. So, the special uh, phenomenon, uh, some nerve cells are able to synthesize and release hormones into the circulation or just simply secrete hormones into the circulation. The father of the neuroendocrinology is Jeffrey Harris, uh, who discovered the neurovascular regulation of pituitary gland and uh, it was published this in 1955. And uh, our department was among also the pioneers of this field especially Professor Santagote and his uh, 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 pupils, the three Belas, Bela Flerko, Bela Mesh and Bela Holas. Uh, they wrote this uh, uh, textbook, which is the Bible of the uh, hypothalamic control of the pituitary gland. And uh, uh, my book was dedicated by Professor Santagote when I started my work in 86 and then with the three Bela. Unfortunately, the last two Bela died last year, so I have to uh, add 19, uh, I mean, uh, 2019 for both. <clears throat> and uh, among the Hungarian neuroendocrinologists, three guys, uh, three uh, uh, researchers uh, uh, were uh, awarded by the Harris Memorial Prize and Memorial Lecture. But these uh, uh, connections were mentioned earlier the uh, magnus neuroceptor system and the pyroxellular neuroceptor system and will be mentioned later with uh, Dr. Andres Nagy in his lecture. And finally, also related to our department, Professor Vila Flerk, who was my first boss, uh, had a good uh, friendship with uh, Professor Andrew Shelley, who got Nobel Prize in uh, 1977 for the discovery of the GNRH especially, and also the TRH. And, uh, uh, he developed a collaboration between the two departments and that's why several uh, colleagues, including me, uh, uh, had the opportunity to work with him in his laboratory in uh, New Orleans at that time. Thank you very much for your attention.